refinishing a Case XX state utility knife salvaged from a Michigan lake cabin. William Hovis Smith, 2017. The first photo was the knife as it was being worked on, and now as a finished knife about to tackle its first task, that is cleaning that goose. I am the author of Backyard Deer Hunting and also the owner of a new company, Hovey's Knives of China. And among the things we do is refurbish old pieces of American cutlery. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. It is a rainy night in Georgia and a good night to be doing something in the knife shop. In previous videos, I've shown you how we made our Billy Joe Rubido knives by using a piece of found steel, in this case a section of tiller point which was very much rusted, and we made a original design paring knife. The most recent manifestation of this is we now have us some blanks cut of stainless steel. So we can now offer these designs of paring knives in stainless. Now we only had eight blanks cut. So there will only be eight of these knives at this series. And if you would want one, uh, you can place an order. Now these knives as finished are $150. I'm sorry, we can't make $40 knives. Uh, we have to make some money at it. But these are unique knives, they have unique capabilities, and most especially, they are designed to sit flat on the work surface. So the blades do not touch the surface, and you can pick them up and use them any time. Today, we are moving up in size to this stake and utility knife. Now also in the Billy Joe Rubido series, we take old blades and the last couple we worked on were carbon steel and we refurbish them. This is out of stainless steel. It's a case knife and this was out of their old America series of cooking knives. They made a whole variety of these and these were made to be utilitarian and inexpensive knives and unfortunately uh, they were bought and abused most typically. It did not help that what they chose to use for handle material was walnut. And unlike denser woods like cherry and most especially like woods such as this African rosewood, uh, this walnut tends to stain very, very badly, especially if you throw it in the dishwasher. Never put your wood handle knives in a dishwasher, folks. It ruins them. So, uh, not only is this knife recovered from a Michigan fish camp and just generally abused all around, but its scales are, are just terrible. In this particular knife, there's some hard dents in this relatively soft walnut, one right here. The pins are brass, and they appear to be holding pretty well. Because this is a stainless steel knife, I don't have the rust problems along the scales here that I oftentimes have with carbon steel blades. Then, now is the time to decide what you want to do with it. Two ways to go with a knife like this. First off, uh, it's probably good to do a little experimentation. First off, can we straighten this point? Can we get this wowie out of it? A couple of taps with a good hammer on an anvil might do it. Then, we can regrind this edge, which is certainly necessary, and put a secondary edge on it. So I'll put on a secondary edge, which will have a little different contrast in color as I grind, and then take it back up to a sharp point again. 
even if you're never going to do a full-size shop like this, but only need to do occasional hobby work, oftentimes you will need some sort of vise. Now most vices come with a little small anvil surface. Now this is not really for heavy, heavy pounding, despite its appearance. Uh, you will crack these cast iron vices uh, if you really, really put serious stuff on it. So we're going to put the blade here, and we're going to take our non-marring hammer, and we're going to see what we can do with it here. I'm trying to put it as flat down as I can. Getting there. No, that's not coming out. There's just too much of a little dimple right there. The first thing I want to do is make this a straight line across. Okay, so I've got the edge now straight across and taking this radius very, very smoothly. It's sharp right here and it's also hot and gotten rid of that wowie down there. Now our initial grinding on that stone has flattened the bottom of this blade. Now we've also removed some of the logo here. But that's unavoidable in reshaping the knife this much. Remember, we have shortened it the whole knife length by a quarter inch now. And this profile of the blade here at the bottom is now as flat a grind this way as I can get. That way I can put it on this medium belt and shape to a uniform edge. Otherwise, if I just had it sharp on some and flat on the other, I wouldn't have a uni the uniformity I need to actually grind a good edge on this knife. Now those few passes that you saw were all that were needed. Now we've shaped the blade now, and now you can feel an edge. And that's as far as you want to take it with this grit. So now we're going to change and put on a finer grit and start actually doing the sharp. What we previously used was a 60 grit sand, and now we're going to a 120 to actually start putting the edge on the steel itself. This edge on this knife is not taking as keen an edge as carbon steel will, 
or as does my own heat treated stainless materials this is still a little bit soft now I did get one blemish there where I went up just a little high and caught for an instant the edge of the sanding we're going to see what the handle material will do we're going to continue with the same grit but start now grinding on the handle Compared to custom handle materials, this walnut has very little to recommend it. Uh, but I'm trying to get it down to a fresh enough surface so the stain and the sealant I'm going to put on it will actually take. I'm going to use a 150 block here. And that'll get rid of some of these rough scratches on the brass. We finished our sanding on the grit and we've taken it down to 400 grit and the wood is showing a little, little, little bit of figure. Now we've lost all of the markings on the, grit, on the blade and uh, what we can see now is SC682 which is a model number and 5 inch. So this is an SC682 5 inch, or was originally. And now, since we have removed all the markings just about by the necessity of reshaping the edge, uh, we might as well just go ahead and we'll buff this blade to a uniform finish. But what we're going to do is we're going to put it on the scotch bright here until we get these uh, blemishes out of it and give it a uniform polish and then do a little finishing here. Like the Mississippi Gambler, you've got to know when to quit, and I think I've about reached this stage on this knife. Uh, we did put it and we did a little light polishing on it. You could polish it to a mirror bright finish, but with this grade of knife, I don't see that as being desirable. If I do more work on the scales, it looks like I'm going to imperil this pin. Now, this pin is, it is actually a brass brad, is what it is. But you can see I'm exposing the glue bond here. So if I grind more on this side, I'm going to lose more and more of that pin, which is not desirable. So far as the blade goes, uh, we've got it down to a uniform polish. It's not mirror, it's a, a high brush, I would call it. But I think that's fine. It's making for a very attractive knife. On these scales, uh, the walnut scales, when these knives were new, they had a dark stain on them, but they didn't last very long. So I am going to put a dark walnut stain on this, let that dry, and then put a coat of polyurethane on it. And that'll make these grips much more durable. I'm going to use expedient of just dipping and holding the whole thing in here.
have completed work on our case steak and utility knife. And it's got a job to do, guys. Yeah. It's going to clean this goose. I'm sure in Michigan uh, it cleaned many a walleye. But I don't have any walleyes. But I'd rather suspect uh, it might have seen a goose or two. So, that's what we're going to do with it. But now, this is Hobie Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Besides backyard deer hunting, I'm the author of a number of outdoor books, all of which have chapters on knives and their uses. Now here is a picture of some of the interesting knives that we produce from Hovey's Knives of China. These are based on ancient Chinese patterns of over 2,000 years ago. And we offer them in a variety of patterns as you see. Restoring a knife like this from a lake cabin and returning it to use in a modern kitchen lets you keep in touch with your own past. You might not own the lake cabin anymore, but you can own the knives that we use there. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 580 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye, and God bless.